In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, <coughs> my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who gave the martyr St. Thomas Becket the courage to give up his life for the sake of justice, grant through his intercession that renouncing our life for the sake of Christ in this world, we may find it in heaven, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brethren, now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake and in my flesh I complete what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is the church, of which I became a minister according to the divine office which was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now made manifest to the saints. To them, God has chosen to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we proclaim, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, 
that we may present every man mature in Christ. For this I toil, striving with all the energy which he mightily inspires within me. For I want you to know how greatly I strive for you and for those at Laodicea and for all those who have not seen my face, that their hearts may be encouraged as they are knit together in love to have all the riches of assured understanding and the knowledge of God's mystery of Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path, he is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my own sheep and my own, and my own know me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus said to his apostles, A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher, and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, utter in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim upon the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground without your father's will. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my father who is in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. 
On the 29th of December, 1170, Thomas Beckett, Archbishop of Canterbury, was murdered in his cathedral after the king dropped a heavy hint that he wanted to be rid of him. But almost immediately, this Englishman was recognized throughout Europe, throughout Christendom, as a great saint. Within no time at all, he was commemorated in that wonderful mosaics in Monreale, the Basilica of Monreale in Sicily. Within five years, there was a church dedicated to him in Salamanca. And Chaucer's pilgrims, of course, are on their way in Canterbury Tales to worship at his shrine, venerate his bones. But at the Reformation, all that changed totally. Henry VIII detested him. He wanted all memory of him erased. His shrine was destroyed. His bones disappeared. Hundreds of churches dedicated to Thomas Becket were rededicated to Thomas the Apostle. All references in the liturgy were systematically blotted out, even more than references to the Pope. And in Christchurch, just down the road from Backfriars, the stained glass window commemorating the death of Becket was only preserved because they removed his head and replaced it with clear glass. So how did he go from being this great, revered saint to being the archetypical enemy, from martyr to traitor? Thomas's rise, meteoric rise, was entirely due to the king. He was born into a family of smallholders who went bust. He never received a good education. His Latin was atrocious. He seems to have been rather a gruff person. According to legend, he forbade the nightingales in Otford ever to sing again because they disturbed his prayers. And when he was opposed by the people of Strood in Kent, he cursed that their children be born with tails. But King Henry saw in him a useful, efficient servant to do his will. Just as Henry VIII saw in another Thomas, Thomas Cromwell, a useful tool. So Henry had him made Chancellor of England in 1155 and then Archbishop of Canterbury to serve him. But this low-born creature of the king dared stand up against his monarch for the freedom of the church. Late in his life, his identity as a member of the body of Christ triumphed over his identity as the king's servant. In Downton Abbey, Lord Grantham is deeply shocked when one of his daughters runs away with the chauffeur. But probably even worse than marrying a servant, he was a Catholic. And Grantham proclaims that these Catholics are all a bit Johnny Foreigner. Like Beckett, they do not put king and country first. No unquestioning loyalty to the state. Richard Conrad spoke about this very eloquently yesterday, so I'm afraid I had to scrap my planned homily. But in this time of rising populism and nationalism all over the world, St. Thomas Becket summons us to recognize our deepest identity 
is as members of the body of Christ. We are brothers and sisters of unknown foreigners, fratelli tutti. So it was completely appropriate that from the beginning, this Englishman was recognized throughout Christendom. Migrants, people in need, all over the world are our flesh and our blood. As we say in the third Eucharistic prayer, gather to yourself your children scattered throughout the world. And Henry's anger was exacerbated because he was betrayed by his own creation. When he dropped his hints to the night, he said he was being treated in contempt by a low-born cleric. And so the second lesson of Thomas for us today is that it's possible to change late in life, even for bishops. Like St. Augustine, Thomas could say, late have I loved you. It's never too late to be liberated from narrow identities and acquire a Christian heart. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become a spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the offerings we bring in celebration of St. Thomas be acceptable to you, we pray, O Lord, so that they may be pleasing to your majesty just as the shedding of this martyr's blood 
was precious in your sight through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of, your, of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible, and so with angels and dark angels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he set the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance of your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, that promise the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have donated to your heart. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, 
shepherd throughout the world. To all of you, godly brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this world, this kind of witness to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that we have. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us that determination which made your martyr St. Thomas faithful in your service and victorious in suffering, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.